Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to six things that we learned from Doncaster Rovers 1, Bradford City 3. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in on our six discussion points down in the comment section down below. We've got quite a lot to get through in today's video and I am once again joined by Corbin to go through what was another very very good result for us the performance maybe not quite up to standard as what we've expected over the last couple of weeks but we've scored three goals away from home in a derby job done absolutely fantastic day if you've not already gone and checked out the match day vlog from yesterday then make sure to go do so but we'll start out then with our first box it is a green box for Andy Cook where else could we start but with the big man two goals one assist a brilliant performance from him now I actually said after about 25 minutes is Andy Cook going to win an aerial duel tonight and then within about 30 seconds later he'd stuck one in the back of the net a brilliant header I think Smallwood does really well to block off his marker it's a great header from Cook managed to go through a number of bodies uh, there was a bit of a delayed reaction from the away end but still a great header from Andy Cook his assist as well for Tyler Smith's goal absolutely brilliant I actually thought he was going to shoot he disguised the pass so well and he's obviously an emphatic finish from Tyler Smith and then the third goal it's just classic Andy Cook great play from Gilead great to see him get another assist that's something we've been expecting and asking more of from Gilead and he does really well he cuts the ball back and Andy Cook with a brilliant first time finish and it was great to see him back celebrating with the fans you know I think it's been very clear over the last couple of weeks that he hasn't been the biggest fan of a certain number of our fans unfortunately but it seemed like he'd finally got that connection back and you know when we were singing his chant at the end of the game as well when he got subbed off and he deserved that round of applause and Ash Taylor were playing central midfield for the last couple of minutes but it just seemed to work at the end of the day and Cook definitely did deserve that round of applause. I thought it was absolutely brilliant and obviously to see him come away with two goals and an assist, I think that's up to 10 league goals now. Is it 12 in all competitions as well, which is obviously great to see. Four assists as well in all competitions now for him. Absolutely brilliant return and definitely deserves a green box. I thought it was brilliant yesterday. Yeah, it was. And, uh, he's very much a legend really. He's in the top 20 goals of all time for City now. He, every weekend he seems to be getting one and he got a three-year deal. A lot of eyes won that deal because for 32, 33 year old striker to be getting a deal that big, it's it's going to raise the eyebrows. But he got 30 goals last season, definitely deserved the deal. And he's like I say, you know, he's got some big goals so far this season already, past double figures. And he, he definitely has deserved that contact against Notts County. I think that was probably where a lot of it came from that criticism. And he, he missed 11 shots, uh, didn't score, and they were really poor in, in that game. So I, I think he deserved the criticism. It's if it got personal. But you, you get idiots in every fan base, and uh, you know if if, if he's the shit showing, but he's, he's against the whole fan base for that. Don't really agree with that because there's twenty thousand fans down a week, and if you're having a go at just two of them, you know a lot of them aren't even on social media. But uh, great performance again. His overall play is fantastic. His link up play for Tyler Smith's goal, uh, great little touch in behind the defence, and uh, Smith finished it well. So really impressed with his overall performance. And then he's got the goals to back it up as well. So definitely becoming a legend and another great performance. Yeah, I think he's the 18th now outright on his own in terms of the all-time top goal scorers at the football club. And by the time that three-year contract is up, he might even get another one after that. He could certainly be within at least the top five, top three come the end of that deal because the man scores goals, he lives and breathes goals. And I think early on in the season, the criticism was justified. You know, he had a brilliant year last year and he was almost, he maybe had two bad games throughout the whole season. Earlier on in this season, though, there were certainly games that he could criticise him for, but then the people who were going personal and abusing him, it, that is just, mind-boggling because Andy Cook at this level he's going to score goals he's going to create chances and he had a really really good game for me yesterday we'll move on then to box number two it is another green box at this time for Jonathan Tompkinson his second league start for Bradford City his second green box in one of these videos he was absolutely brilliant again for a man who doesn't look the most physical I thought he dealt with Joe Ironside and Mo Fowl very well obviously big credit to Matty Platt and Kieron Kelly as well but Tompkinson for me he's very very complete you can see why Norwich are reluctant to let go of him on a permanent basis. He's got the skill set to certainly play in the championship one day. And I think right now he's obviously loving his time at Bradford City. His parents are very involved in social media and all that sort of stuff. And while things are going well, that's all you really want to see. And I thought he had a really, really good defensive performance. Obviously, the goal we concede, you can't really blame any of the defenders for that. And Tomkinson, for me, I thought, kept their 
a forwards quiet old game when he had to go 1v1 and defend. I thought he did that very well. He was strong in the air, good on the ball. He's obviously got some good recovery pace. And Tompkinson, for me, I thought had a really, really good game yesterday. It was probably a bit more of a physical game for him this week than he was last week. And there was a lot of talk about how physical the Jills were, but they had two very, very big lads who were not scared to stick their head in, stick their elbows in. And I thought Matty Platt and Kieran Kelly as well, they were very good. But Tompkinson, for me, were the pick of the bunch. He was absolutely outstanding yesterday and thoroughly deserves a green box. Yeah, he's had a tough start to his city career not getting in at under Mark Hughes and he should have played a lot more under him he's the complete centre-back and he would have a placement that we needed under Critchlow and you, if you put him in that back three when Mark Hughes would have he probably would have got a few more results because he probably suits Hughes' play more than Alexander's because he's fantastic on the ball really assured composed player and it gives a real good bounce to back three because Platts no nonsense Kelly um, ain't afraid to hoof it he can just slow the game down a bit and play a few more sideways, backwards passes, but that helps us and Alexander to just take the sting out the game a bit more. Uh, like I say, really physical, which has surprised me because, um, again, looking at Stevenage's stats, he didn't look to be the most physical player, but he's adapted well to that. And hopefully he can um, try and add on a couple of goals from, from set pieces as well because some of it surprised me is that he's the one who tends to be going up for the long throws as well. I had a thought that maybe Platt and Kelly have gone up for them with his recovery pace, but a really good player who's gained his chance in the team and taking that that chance, and that's all you ask for, and that's what I like about Alexander and what he's brought to the to the team, giving players a chance, and then when they're winning, they're taking that chance to get in the, the game next week, and that's all you can ask for, really. I think while we're on the topic of subject around the centre halves, I think something that is really interesting at this moment in time is Sam Stubbs not even being able to get into the match this squad. You consider how good he was last season for Bradford City and the fact that he can't even get on the bench, but I don't really think he can have many complaints about that because I think Stubbs' performances so far this season have warranted him being dropped down to the bench and Taylor in recent weeks warrants to at least be on the bench so if you're only going to have one centre half I think based on recent form it would have to be Ash Taylor and Sam Stubbs for me is not going to be happy to not even sit on the bench not be included in the match day squad and I certainly think we've obviously Timmy Odessina returning from his short term loan with walking in January Sam Stubbs could certainly be a man who does move on in at the transfer window but we'll move on then to box number three again the only non-green box in today's video is a yellow for Harry Lewis I mean the goal we concede it's just a big error from Harry Lewis again he must be near double figures in terms of errors that have led to goals so far this season. It wasn't the greatest back pass from Brad Halliday, but Lewis's touch is very heavy and then he doesn't really seem in any rush to try and clear the ball. He kicks it and it ends up hitting, I think it's Joe Ironside and all he then has to do is turn around and stick it into the net because Lewis, for some reason, turns around and starts running away from him. I don't know why he decided to do that. It was clearly a rush of blood moment to the head, but really, really poor decisions. There were about three or four poor decisions there from Harry Lewis. I don't know why he didn't try and stand him up because I think Ironside was actually facing away from goal. And yes, you are the goalkeeper, but... Don't just allow him to have a free shot or goal. Allow your defenders the opportunity to maybe try and get back. And say if the ball would have been squared into the box, I think a lot of people would have had less complaints about that rather than Harry Lewis just turning around and allowing him a free shot or goal because he was nowhere near trying to save. And it was really, really poor that from Harry Lewis, I thought. Apart from that, the rest of the game, there was a couple nervy moments. You know, he dropped one of the corners right in front of a Doncaster player, but just about managed to get on the end of it. And I think in the second half, he was much more confident coming for crosses and all that sort of stuff. But Harry Lewis this season has had a number of these occasions now where he's given away stupid goals. And that, again, last night was just really, really poor to see. I know it's League Two at the end of the day, but considering how good Harry Lewis was last season, to see all these mistakes creeping into his game like what we have this season, on another day, it could have been very costly. Thankfully, though, it hasn't cost us, and that is why it's on a yellow box rather than a red but yeah Lewis has definitely cost his team a clean sheet there and I, I can't give him a green box but I think a red would maybe be too harsh considering the fact that we obviously won the match 3-1 so I'm going with yellow for Harry Lewis One of those crazy errors that just leaves you speechless I think you covered it pretty well uh, because um, it, you know it, it looks like he's running in quicksand because it happened last season against Grimsby um, I think it when the first half gave a penalty away and it's, it happened this season against Colchester, I think it was, um, with our little nippy striker who, who won it off him. And he's, he's just really slow to react to the, to the ball in, in that situation. And uh, he's looked really inconsistent this season. He looks a bit nervous for crosses and doesn't really have that presence. He said um, on a podcast earlier on in the season that the three at the back led to that because you, you're playing with different centre-backs all the time and it's different to adapt to three centre-backs instead of just two. But you can't really say that anymore because it's now December 
it's uh, it, you know it's Christmas and he's got that solid centre back partnership now with Kelly Platt Tomkinson. Maybe not Tomkinson; he's only been in two games, but Kelly and Platt have been consistent in that back line. You've got to be starting to build performances now and not having a game like last week against Gillingham where we were really solid, made an outstanding save and then go and make another mistake the week after. He needs to try and find that balance. But the the thing is, we've seen with Cook, you criticise them and then they go and turn it around. I do have faith that Lewis will do that. I don't think he turned bad overnight. I think he probably just needs confidence. Obviously, he's had a few problems that have come about in the summer. Barnsley and that, um, the, the way that he said he reacted to the defeat in the playoff final. But, um, yeah, for me, he will come good. But you've got to be able to criticise it when he isn't. And at the minute, he's not performing to the level that he needs to be to get us these... Um, to, I mean, we're still winning, but it could have quite easily gone the other way. Yeah, I mean, we saw last season that Harry Lewis is clearly a very, very capable goalkeeper at this level. So it is really strange why he's struggling so much so far this season. And that's not the first time this season where we've conceded from his sloppy kicking. And even... Uh, uh, I think later on in the match as well, there's a, a back pass that got played to him. And in, instead of just playing a simple, maybe 15-yard pass into Smallwood, he goes for a left-footed clearance, absolutely slices it straight to a Doncaster play. And we were under pressure again. And I think sometimes Harry Lewis maybe just needs to boot the ball out and take a deep breath and just recover because he clearly plays with a lot of emotion in the game. He's very similar to Andy Cook when, from that point of view. But yeah, Lewis yesterday definitely deserved the yellow box. It was a massive area which led to the goal. And on another day, could have definitely been a match decider. But we'll move on then to box number four. We're back with the green boxes, this time for Tyler Smith. Great to see him finally get into double figures as well for the season. I think that's four or five in the league now as well, which is obviously great to see. Since Alexander's come in, he's getting the best out of Tyler Smith. You think the fact that Mark Hughes was playing him as a, a left winger, the exact same thing that he was doing to Jake Young, forcing him to play out of position on the wing and surprise, surprise, a striker doesn't score goals. And doesn't really want to defend when you make them do that. Alexander's got Smith playing in his natural position. And at this moment in time, obviously, Jake Young will be returning in January. Does Jake Young actually start, though, for Bradford City? I think he's got to start out on the bench. Probably takes Derbyshire's place there for me. And then he's got to work his way into the side. When he gets his chance, he has to take it. And then when Smith gets his chance again, he has to take it. And it is obviously great competition to have. We're going to have a number of strikers back and available in that January period. And obviously for the rest of the season, if they do all manage to stay fit. But Tyler Smith is scoring goals. A brilliant finish as well. I think he said in his post-match interview that you've always got to be alert as a striker in the penalty area. And he was more than alert because it was a, I think it was a no-look pass from Andy Cook and a brilliant finish from Tyler Smith. There was absolutely no need to put it into the top corner. It reminded me of when Luis Suarez nutmegged David Luiz and then unnecessarily put it right in the top corner in the Champions League a number of years ago. Not quite on the same length, obviously. Uh, Tyler Smith is much better than Luis Suarez, but a brilliant finish from him. And it was a very physical game and you know there were a few times where Tyler Smith wasn't really involved all too much because of how long we were going and you know they sent her after just looking to hold him and because he is quite small he's quite easy to push off the ball but he got one chance in the game he took his opportunity and that's all that matters at the end of the day great for him to get another goal to have two strikers as well into double figures and now I think that's absolutely brilliant I think it's the first time since 2014-15 we've had more than one player get into double figures and it's only Christmas which is obviously great to see we could end up the season with Cook, Young and Smith all on 20, 25 goals, which is obviously absolutely brilliant. But Tyler Smith for me yesterday definitely deserves a green box. It was just a great finish and a great goal. Yeah, it's it's a case of why play square pegs in round holes and that's what I thought we wouldn't do under you. We end up doing it, like say, with Young and Smith and uh, he's, he's been fantastic recently with Cook. A bit of that strike partnership that we've missed with maybe Hanson and Wells and yeah, um, a, a few others in, in the 90s and thousands, I think. Someone compared compared them to, to Blake and, and Mills, or maybe it's someone else I've got confused with there. But um, it it is I criticised him against Notts County, and that I backed him before then. And then I, I, on my own channel and on here, criticised him, said why did we sign him? He's useless. He's he's lazy. He didn't won. And since then, he's he's won his socks off. He's tireless, and he, he's putting in wheel shift. And like I say, working really well with Cook, linking up with him. Last season, I looked at. Cook and I said, you know, if you're playing two up top, then um, you know you, you do need an, another option like a Tyler Smith, someone who's got a bit more pace about him, maybe a bit better technically than Cook to work with him, because all of us too like for like for me, and Derbyshire just weren't at the level. So really glad we brought him in, and now I'm certainly glad that he's performing to the level that we needed him to, because coming in from Hull, no real pedigree, 
playing there. Had a loan at Oxford, didn't really do up there. And it, it's good to give him a, a deal to back him and then to be repaying that deal and to, to have been scouted him, which has been good scouting, you've got to agree. Um, you know, getting nine goals in ten, you've got to have some quality and that, that goal really impressed me. So, yeah, I think he's adapted really well to the team and Alexander has got him playing in a way that really suits him and hopefully can continue the one going into a new year. Moving on then into our penultimate box, we have got another green box, this time once again for Richie Smallwood. I thought he was just absolutely brilliant. He won every second ball on the pitch, and he was that good that even the Doncaster manager was praising him. Grant McCann said what I've just said there. He won every second ball on the pitch. He was screening in front of their big centre-half, and it allowed one of Platt or Kelly to come behind. Uh, not big centre-half, big striker, sorry. And it allowed one of Platt or Kelly to get round the back. And I thought he did a really, really good job, whether it was Ironside or more foul he just did a really good job of screening it and it makes it much harder for a striker to win a flick on if he's got a big defender up his backside and he's got someone like Richie Smallwood in front and obviously I mentioned earlier for the first goal that we scored for Andy Cook's first goal the corner comes in and Small does a really good job of blocking off and protecting really Andy Cook to allow him a free header at goal and he goes over and there's a, a few words exchanged from Richie Small and I thought it was another really, really good captain's performance from our number six. I thought he had a really, really good game. Like I say, just knew what needed to be done, knew when he needed to win the ball back, maybe take a cynical tactical foul or do something a little bit sly and he went to clip it into the channel and Smith was running onto it all game. I think that's again something that we have to credit Tyler Smith for. He was non-stop work rate throughout the whole game and small for me. There's not really much you can say about him because he doesn't really do anything too stand out and amazing but you'd certainly notice when he's not there. I think at this moment in time he's one of the first names on the team sheet. While he might not get the praise and plaudits that he deserves because he doesn't score many goals or get many assists. You know, the, what he brings to this team is completely invaluable. I don't think you've got another player in the whole squad who can do that role. Obviously, McDonald is quite similar in terms of the position, but I think they're very different players. McDonald's very good technically, but I don't think he's as good in terms of like leadership and all that sort of stuff. I think Smallwood is one of the best leaders we've had over the last couple of seasons. And I know that, obviously, last season under Mike Hughes and at the start of this season under Hughes... He wasn't the most popular man in Bradford, but I think since Alexander's come in and even maybe under McDonald before that, I think Smold has certainly improved quite a lot. He's made that position his own. I think this formation is getting the best out of a number of players, but especially Richie Smallwood at this moment in time. I don't think there's any sort of game where you'd bring him off even just to rest him because you need him on that pitch. His experience is invaluable to have and he was absolutely brilliant again yesterday and thoroughly deserves another green box. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. I'll just reiterate all, all that because... I think what, what you see the difference with Alexander and Hughes is one of the players that's been um, that developed and completely changed it in the way he plays the game it is Richie Smallwood underused, backwards, sideways passing, took quite a while to um, play the ball at times and really slow tempo play from him. But un under Alexander, he gets the ball and he hoops it straight up to Cook without an hesitation and uh, it, it, like I say, you know, he, he does the solid stuff really well, does the simple play, gets stuck in, protects the back back five and does the dirty work for Walker and Gilead to be able to push up into the penalty box and the, he can protect that back line by being in the right places and uh, by, like I say, a bit of s as well, getting um, get, get, getting Cookie's goal and getting in the opposition Zeds. And the thing is, with, with Hughes and the way he played, definitely towards the end when he got dropped by Hughes, is he was just leading by example, playing the way Hughes were telling him to. Now, and Alexander has seen a better version of him by also just playing the way Alexander does. And that's, you get different leaders, you get shouty leaders, but you also get leaders who, like I say, lead by example. And that's definitely what Smallwood's doing at the minute. I think it certainly helps the fact that the pressure's kind of come off Smallwood a little bit because last season it was all eyes on Smallwood. Why is he passing it backwards? Why is he passing it sideways? He set pieces a lot of the time as well. We're really, really poor and that is something he got massively criticised for. But since he's been taken off corners especially, I think our delivery into the box has been really good from Walker and on a few occasions it has been, I think, Richards and Halliday have been taken as well. So it is nice that we've got a wide variety, but I think Walker's set pieces are very good. We've scored a lot more set pieces as well under Graham Alexander. We never really seem to score many under Mark Hughes. But we'll move on then to our final box of today's video. It is a green one for Jamie Walker. Just a very, very good game from him. You know, the thing we've been asking for from Jamie Walker over since he really signed, to be honest with you, was consistency. And I never really felt like we got that under Mark Hughes, if I'm honest with you. But since, again, Graham Alexander's come in over the last six or seven weeks, 
it's not just the goals and assists that he's been bringing. You know, obviously he's been bringing a lot of goals recently, but his performances as well have been very good. Him in that number eight role next to Gilead, who I thought was brilliant as well. But I wanted to talk about Walker specifically today. I thought just every time he got on the ball, he looked to make things happen. Hopefully his injury isn't long term. He's a really, really bad tackle from the Doncaster player. And obviously Jamie Walker is quite injury prone. And he has had a number of injuries throughout his career. Obviously, if he is injured, we've got a very good replacement to come in in Alex Patterson. But for me personally, I thought Walker had a really, really good game yesterday. Just quality on the ball. Defensive work rate was brilliant. You know, his press was very good as well. Same was Gilead's. But obviously, if Walker is going to be out for a little bit, we've got a very, very good replacement in Alex Patterson. And it's about him then taking his opportunity because we sort of start the season. Alex Patterson is clearly a very, very good goal scoring midfielder at this level. And will he be able to do it in this new system under a new manager? I thought he's looked bright so far. In the minutes that he's had, you know, the couple of brief cameos, but I'll be very excited to see when Patterson does get his first start. But I wouldn't say I'm desperate to see it because I think Walker, Gilead, Small, with that midfield three is so concrete at this moment in time. You know what you're going to get from all three of them every single week. They're so consistent and they're brilliant as a trio in there. Pretty much every player who's played at this moment in time is a nail on to start the next game, unless there's some sort of an injury issue because I think they've all been absolutely excellent. But Walker, for me recently, I think we need to give a big shout out to him because he's bringing goals, he's bringing assists obviously another assist for him yesterday from the corner and just just quality on the ball and it's we're finally seeing that what we saw in the first half on his debut against Salford a couple of years ago we're finally seeing that week in week out for 70 80 90 minutes and it's just brilliant to see and Jeremy Walker definitely deserves a green box for me yeah I, I think again like you said the way Alexander plays definitely suits him and he's probably the one player who's suits the way Alexander plays the most out of anyone when he was playing a 4-4-2, he was putting him on the left and that just didn't, didn't suit him at all. Whereas in this number eight, he's got that licence to go forward, but he ain't getting picked up as often because he ain't a number 10. So he can get, he can be short of shadow into the penalty box a lot more. He's got a few goals by doing that last week at Gillingham. This week, getting into the penalty box and getting some good deliveries in there. And for me, the problem I've always had with Walker is consistency. And if he can hit that going into this second half of the season, and keep up that level. The problem is he's obviously just got injured again, but he should be fine. But um, he, he could be really pivotal because the the way we press up up the pitch is is brilliant, and Walker is instrumental to that because he gets those high turnovers, and then you can quickly counter. And we've seen us do that quite a lot so far this season under Alexander. Um, so hopefully he can keep that form going and take it into a new year. To summarise then, yesterday was a very, very good win for us. We got the job done again at six wins in a row. I think the first time we've done that in one season since 1984, which is absolutely fantastic. Fair play to Graham Alexander. He's completely turned this around. You know, if you'd have said at half time against Notts County, after that game, we'd go and win six in a row, score, I think, 20 goals and only concede two in that time. It's absolutely brilliant. And you look at the goals that we did concede, they were very, very sloppy from our point of view. But Cook, Great to see him back amongst the goals. Obviously, great for him to get another assist. Tomkinson, for me, really, really solid in there. Harry Lewis, big blunder for their goal. But apart from that, had a couple of the shaky moments as well in there. Tyler Smith, great finish and all-round link-up play, to be honest with you. Smallwood, captain fantastic. He was absolutely brilliant in that midfield. And Jamie Walker, fingers crossed it's a speedy recovery and we do see him back for Bradford City. If not Boxing Day, maybe the Stockport game. We've got three tricky games coming up now against Morecambe, Stockport and Crewe. I know Morecambe and Crewe haven't been on the greatest run at this moment in time but yesterday I think Stockport beat Notts County so that is going to be a very very tough game at Valley Parade I think that's on the 29th of December but we'll leave it there then for today's episode if you have enjoyed please make sure to drop a like on there for us if you could join it 80 likes as we said at the start of today's video that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you're new as well we are on the road to 8,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts in on our six talking points down in the comment section down below thank you all very much for watching have a good rest of your day and i'll see you very soon for another video peace